Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Anna and today I'm going to be talking about all the sequels that I want to read this year. So there's going to be some new ones and some old ones. As in like 2022, 2023, something like that. Uh, they're all going to be sequels that I have already mentioned so many times. So I'm not going to even bother to like read a summary because I already mentioned it so many times. So maybe just a brief overview, but... Honestly, we have already talked about them so many times, so let's get going. So my first book is Ashes of Gold by J.L. It's number two in Wings of Ebony, which I loved. Liv has no memory of how she ended up locked in a basement prison without her magic or allies. But she's a girl from the East Row, and girls from the East Row don't give up. Girls from the East Row pick themselves back up when they fall. Girls from the East Row break themselves out. So this is like from 2022. I still have yet to read the book. I'm hoping to read it this year. Because I really did love the first one. It was great. So yeah, I don't know what's the whole about. <laughs> it's somewhere here. It's right here on the second. <laughs> My next book is Crown of Cinders, which is the number two of Wings of Fury by Emily R. King. So again, this is from 2021. <laughs> Alethea's head is still spinning from her discovery that she's had a daughter of Cronus, the terrible Titan King. After Alethea failed to cast Cronus down into the deepest pit of Tartarus, the king calls upon his powerful allies, the Elder Titans, who reign supreme over the heavens, earth, and seas. To force Alethea to surrender, the Elder Titans rain down wrath upon the mortal world, with earthquakes, famine, pestilences, hurricanes, and all manner of destruction. Lucas, Alethea's friend and confidant, hides her, hides her and her godly siblings, but they can't run forever. She must recruit allies from the younger titans before the afflicted mortals run, turn them into Cronus in exchange for peace. I have in the first book of this, I thought it was okay. I might actually read the sequel, I'm not sure. But it is He Who Drowned the World, which is the number two in the Radiant Emperor, and by Sherry Parker Chan. This literally came out in 2023, so it's not too bad. How much would you give to win the world? Wan Zhang, the Radiant King, is riding high after her victory that tore southern China from its Mongol masters. Now she burns with a new desire to seize the throne and crown herself emperor. But Zhu is the only one with imperial ambitions. Her neighbor in the south, the Kuan Madame Zhang, wants the throne for her husband, and she's strong enough to run Zhu off the map. To stay in the game, Zhu will have to gamble everything on a risky alliance with an old enemy. The talented but unstable and rich general Ouyang, who has already sacrificed everything for a chance and revenge of his father's killers, the Great Khan. I already read the first book. I thought it was okay. Again, I'm still deciding if I should read a sequel. That is Rise of the Snake Goddess by Samantha Knox, which is the number two in the book. This is Lily from 2022. Samantha's Knox's second adventure takes her to the island of Crete, just off the coast of Greece, where she discovers the ancient snake goddess's own golden girdle in the depths of a cave shrine that has been buried for decades. After having been belittled by her archaeology, archaeology professor throughout her first college semester, Sam knows this triumph will prove her worth in this field. But before she can take credit for the find, the girl that is stolen and the island is bitten with a series of earthquakes that don't feel quite geological. So, Indiana Jones 2.0. My next book is Princess of Souls. It's number two in Hanan's Kingdom. So this is the sequel to... Oh my gosh. To Kill a Kingdom uh, by Alexandra Crystal. For 16 years, uh, Celestia uh, Somniatis has been trapped in a castle on the floating mountain, preparing to take her mother's place as King Seraph's right hand. Tied by blood to steal swords from the immortal king of the Six Isles, the Samantias, which foretells the of participants in the festival of predictions. To our on your fate is to save your soul and steal the king's immortality. But if you die, your soul is for free, and though thousands have tried, nobody has ever beaten death. And we will see. <laughs> of course, this is a book I always mention because I really want this author to do well. I really love the book, I really did, uh, the first book. And this is Heavenly Tyrant by Zen and Jay Xiao. After suffering devastating loss and making dreams drastic decisions, Zen finds herself at the seat of power in Huashia, 
but she also has learned that her world is not as it seems, and the relations about an enemy more daunting than Zenta imagined forces her to share power with a dangerous man she cannot simply depose. And despite having vastly different ideas about how they must construct a corrupt and misogynist system that plagues their country, Zenta must join this man in a dance of truth and lies and perform their roles to perfection in order to take down the common enemy who seeks to control them as puppets while dangling one of Zetan's loved ones as hostage. Man, I really want this book to come out. Uh, of course, I already talked about this book as well, which is Sound of Gong, which is the number two in Strike the Zyther. And this is by Joan He. All her life, therefore, has tried to rise above her humble origins as a no-name orphan. Now she is a god, and the warrior's body and never has she felt more powerless. Her loud, her lord is in red horse of Westlands, but her position is tenuous. In the north, the empress remains on the Miasma's thumb. In the north and the south, the alliance with Sakana is in pieces. So my next book is in number two from Sing Me to Sleep. This one is Drop Me With Dreams by Gabby Burton. Sayonara is so called is on the run. A case of several murderers of Simon and Dan think are promised. Even a newly con King Hayes can't protect her if she's caught. The only way to save her life is to send her on a dangerous mission across the magical barrier that, sounds, that surrounds the kingdom. And my next sequel is The Mirror of Peace by Link. Alexandra Bracken, it's number two in Silver in the Bone. With the dream of Avalon and villains, Tamsin and her friends are all that stands in the way of Lord Death's plan to unleash the horrors of Unwen on the world of the living. As the wild hunt climbs a bloody path across continents, Tamsin is mustering allies, tracking down powerful artifacts, and traversing into new other lands in search of a way to stop him. I still have not read the sequel, and it's a sequel to Song of Flame, Song of Silver Flame Like Night. By Amelia Mangel, this is star, this is dark star burning ash falls away. Years ago, the Atlantean colonized the reign of Lance homeland and killed her mother in the search to uncover the last kingdom's greatest, the location of his legendary four demon gods. Lance's mother devoted her life to destroying the demon gods, and Lance is determined to finish her mission. Yet, there are others searching for the gods too. And that can never be a good thing. I don't know about you, but I don't think searching for a god is a good thing. I already talked about this actually recently. It's Amy, Guardian of the Dawn. Basically, she feels she's like exile, and how she always feels something weird in her. And her father got and her father got arrested. Well, her mentally ill father got arrested for stealing a branch. And now Amy kind of sacrificed herself to you know kind of pay the debt kind of thing. So. That's what that book is about. I already talked about it. Um, it is the sequel to Zada, and this sequel is also a retelling of Beauty and the Beast, so not much said, but yeah. So again, I don't want to talk about it too much. I already did, so let's move on. <laughs> My next book is The Blood Orchid by Kylie Lee Baker, number two in The Scarlet Alchemist. Since Zelda entered the world of Royal Alchemist, she has learned that alchemy comes at a price. She has lost loved ones in her search for broader justice against the evil empress, and all she wants now is to find some way to bring them back. Resignation is a specialty after all. And my next book is Throne of Secrets, which is number two of Throne of the Fallen, which I have still not read. I'm hoping to read it for Bookoween. And it's from Carrie Maniscalco. A wicked prince determined to save his kingdom. Gabriel Axton, infamous as the Prince of Gluttony, the self-proclaimed Wake of Lakes, has always lived for indulgence in delicious food and tantalizing women and most of all the thrill of the hunt, and where his love of danger can take over. But when his favorite adventure takes a deadly turn, he realizes something is very wrong in his demon court. With the clock thinking, he must turn to the only one who might uncover the truth. In journalist, he has spent a decade avoiding. Isn't Gabriel also an angel as well? So it's kind of ironic. So how is he a demon in this one? And my next book is Listen Please of Chaos, which is number two in Seven Face of Saints by M.K. Alarm. Damien Matuli isn't aware of it yet, but a small shift starts to crack the foundations of the Amblasian power structure of the rebellion's attack, cracks are beginning to show in Damien's own facade. Uncontrollable anger is bubbling to the surface and can always be pushed down. Can he keep everyone safe, even for himself? We are about to find out. I have also recently just finished this book, 
and it is the Panic Celestial by A.Y. Xiao and it is the number 2 in Shanghai Immortal. All aboard the Immortal Express. Lady Jane is off to Paris where she will encounter romance, danger, and vampires. Now a minister of hell, Lady Jane is a mind-numbling board. All she wants is plain talk and time with her beau, Tony Lee, who has been distracted with immortal matters of late, impending war, and such a drag. But then Angus, Ang Ang a risen southern deity, turns him boneless and drained of a green key. The only way to help him is to return him to his pantheon's healer in residence in Paris, ready for a new adventure and immediately volunteers for the task. Accompanied by Tony Lee, the group sail into the Immortal Express for what should be a run of the mill journey until the train is hijacked by the Vampire Republic who are seeking hostages in the bid to demand recognition by the international pantheons. Jane fears the worst by when she unwittingly reveals her heritage the vampires embrace her as one of their own, and she abandons her friends, caught in an impossible situation, can Jane reuse her weight and spark to save them all? And my next book is a sequel to Threads That Bind, and this is Hearts That Cut by Giga Hansa Polu. It's been five weeks since Alanti to follow the golden thread, and she's no longer, to, no longer close to finding the god on the other end. She spends her days with constant ruling travel and her nights, mowing out the faith that she shares with Edie. Which seems to be fake, ma making matters worse, she and Bianca soon realize that the only leaf has shaken them off, snapped the golden thread, and disappeared. I'm not sure if I read a sequel just because I didn't really enjoy the first one. The first one was Flesh and God, but the first one was Immortal, Immortal Longings by Chloe Gong. And this is wireless things, so I'm not sure if I'm going to read it. I don't know. Like, I really didn't like the first book, so who knows? Kalia Tulomi has succeeded in the impossible. Despite the art she has once set in the bloody games and eliminated King Casa, her talent uncle and the former ruler of Talon, she serves now as a royal advisor to Casa's adopted son, Agus Shenzi, who has risen, risen to the throne. Only Kala knows it really isn't really August. I do like the plot twist at the end though, so that's that. <laughs> and my next book is also a sequel to I Already Read, which is Spice Road by Maya Abraham. Spice Road was okay, it could have been better, but it was okay. So there's a Serpent Sea, which is a number two in the Spice Road trilogy. Maddie is a magic wielding warrior sworn to protect her land from the monsters that roam the desert. But an even worse enemy now threatens her Sahir. As the powerful Hammerlanders march south with the greatest weapon, spice magic and money, knows it's only a matter of time before the invasion of her land begins, and there will be a losing battle for her people. And my last book, which I also just recently finished, the first book, which is A Trial of Sorcerers by uh, Elise Carver, and this is a scene, and the sequel is A Hunt of Shadows. Aima is now a champion of the Solar's Empire. She's after the land she's only dreamed about. But a nightmare awaits her. Her sworn enemy has escaped. His allies are powerful and deadly. And Ima finds herself tangled in the dangerous web of the undercity of Bison, one of the mysterious cut of shadows and lethal pillars battle for the fate of the kingdom. The vengeance has a price. When Ima has cap is captured by her enemies, it's not only for her life, but for the lives of her friends and the men she loves most at stake. That woman she wasn't be the moment the woman she was won't be enough to turn the tides churning against her from long before she was born. She will have to become something more. She will have to love deeper and, and fight fiercer than ever before. The only way to kill a legendary champion will do you will be to become oneself. So those are all the secrets I hopefully can read by this year. If not, I'll just move them on to next year. But yeah, let me know what secrets you are interested in and please like, comment, subscribe. So you'll be notified every time I post and I'll see you in my next one. Bye!